Part of your nursing assessment will be monitoring vital signs. Acute kidney injury is linked to increased risk of hypertension. You will also want to monitor your patient's fluid intake and output. Low urine output, also known as oliguria, may sometimes be the only sign of this condition. A patient with oliguria will have urinary output less than 400 to 500 milliliters in a 24-hour period. Assess the patient's urine for color, blood, and sediment. Your analysis values of glucose, protein, and specific gravity should also be monitored. Assess the patient's skin color for pallor, areas of darkened skin, as well as gray or yellowish areas. Assess for bruises as well, as acute kidney injury may lead to low platelet count. As fluids continue to build up in the body, edema and neck vein distension may manifest. Monitor the patient's level of consciousness and mental status as this condition causes generalized inflammation, which can ultimately result in altered mental status or loss of consciousness. Assess a patient's dialysis site for signs of infection such as erythema, edema, and exudate. Monitor the patient's lungs for crackles, ronchi, or diminished breath sounds. Assess the patient's ECGs for dysrhythmias due to electrolyte imbalances, especially potassium. You should also auscultate for murmurs and a regular heartbeat. Some of the most important nursing interventions for acute kidney injury are prevention and early detection. These measures include limiting exposure to nephrotoxic medications, preventing lengthy periods of hypotension and hypovolemia, and identifying high-risk patients. High-risk individuals include those who are age 65 or over, have existing renal and chronic conditions such as chronic kidney disease, heart failure, or diabetes. Dehydration, sepsis, intensive diuretic therapy, and major surgery may also increase a patient's risk for acute kidney injury. If you are finding value in this video, then please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Other nursing interventions include monitoring kidney function labs, especially for patients taking nephrotoxic drugs and potassium levels, advising patients with chronic kidney disease to avoid NSAIDs such as ibuprofen and naproxen sodium if possible, and monitoring intake and output. Also encourage a low sodium diet with limited high potassium foods. To identify excessive increases, hypervolemia, or losses, hypovolemia, of body fluid, weigh the patient every day at the same time. Foley catheter insertion may be ordered to more accurately monitor output. Signs of hypervolemia include edema, abdominal bloating, cramping, headache, hypertension, and shortness of breath. Hypovolemia signs include fatigue, weakness, thirst, dizziness, hypotension, tachycardia, headache, pallor, cool skin, confusion, and tachypnea. Ensure adequate oral hygiene as bacterial breakdown of urea produces ammonia that can inflame oral mucous membranes. Perform adequate skin care and practice prevention methods for pressure ulcers. Monitor for signs and symptoms of infection as it's the leading cause of death for patients with acute kidney injury. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic rest of the day.